maybe this hasn't happened to you, it's happened to me. I'm at a church function and I look across the room and somebody walks in the room and the first thing and the first thing I do is an internal Olympic eye roll. I think, oh, uh. I hope he or she or they, I hope they don't come over and sit at my table, yeah. right? Well, and sometimes God's got a God's got a great sense of humor, so He sends them right to me. And here, here's the inventory. It's not what is it about him, her, or they that drives me crazy. The inventory is what is it about me that he, she, or they drive me crazy? What is it about me that I have a resentment toward you? What is it about me that when you acted or didn't act in this way, I I was I was frightened to death of of not maybe not my physical well being, but my spiritual well or my emotional well being. And so I reacted in a certain way. And that's where fear and resentment come into my life. It's being able to to name them for what they are. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Uh, you know, I want to be in control all the time, or 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 I I, I don't like to I don't like to, whatever. Um, and so things inside me get triggered, and uh, then I behave in a manner unbecoming a, a disciple of Jesus. So the the moral inventory is an opportunity for me to take a good look at that and simply name it for what it is. I'm afraid, yeah. right? I'm afraid, or I'm really angry with that person, or I, it's uh. I just can't let it go. Yeah. Right. Now, and I have been very, I have been guilty of that on numerous occasions, and uh, and I've made nobody, I've made nobody uh, uh, any sicker than I've made myself for holding on to a, res- a resentment against him or her because he or she did this or that, or didn't do this or that. Uh, and then at some point, I just got to let it go and give it to the Lord and say, "Oh my goodness, mm-hmm. you know, it's taking that inventory." But it's fun to be angry. Huh? It's yeah. just. Just hang on to it's energy. I just love the energy, right, or whatever. Um, I don't know that that answers the question. I no, just sort of good stuff. Rule, I mean, so I, you, I've been thinking a lot about fear as part of this whole study, this whole process, and it's so. On the one hand, we don't tend to think to confess in, in the confessional something like fear that that is often underneath a lot of our maybe more surface level sins. Mm-hmm. But on, I mean, in one sense, I mean, if we're if we're if we're Saint Peter and we're walking across the water toward Jesus and we take our eyes off Jesus. In fear, I mean, there's we don't tend to think of that as a sin, but it's a sin in a certain respect that we know we ought mm-hmm. to trust God, and that a, a, a holy fear of God should cast out all the other fears. But we keep taking our eyes off of Jesus. But it, it almost resembles a little bit of the more obvious addictions we might think of. It's like I know this is wrong, and I know it's insane to to fear because I know Jesus, I know Him, I've met Him, I, I have a relationship, I've been blessed to come to know the Lord, and yet. List with Saint Peter, I still take my eyes off him, and so it, it's a, it's almost this. It's a great example of a kind of a human flaw where we really, if we're really honest with ourselves, it's like, Lord, I need healed from this because I, it's it's wrong, and I do it, but I can't stop doing it, and I know it's insane. I really need to be healed of this, and so mm-hmm. I do like that this this all kind of breaks open this scope with which we might examine what can we what c- can we and should we actually be bringing to the Lord to ask for healing from. Because many of these fears, we often leave them under the surface, uh, and we, we hopefully we're not acting out of them in really obvious ways. But maybe we're not actually bringing out the fears themselves and saying, "Lord, this this too needs healing."